Good morning. It is Candace and Tom and Ali. It is O'Neill's On the Run Life in a Bus and is season three, episode two. And today we're starting our meander south from Bowen. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're all they're all <laughs> riveted today. I'm going coffee free and the other two are flat despite cafe. <laughs> so we're on a good roll already today, guys. Uh, and when we left Bowen, it was our first proper tow with the ute on the new predator system yeah. and going to finch hatton was fine it towed pretty well actually yeah it towed pretty well we were, it took us a little while to set it up but we um yeah we, got well, that we did there. a practice run anyway yeah but we got that pretty down pat now the the towing and i'm just posting um in a couple of weeks there's going to be a video coming out with our hitch up process and everything uh so that'll be good to see be on youtube and facebook but um first stop after we left bowen we all need a little detox i think so we went to Finch hatton gorge yep yeah. which was i didn't particularly go on any of the walks but it was beautiful all sort of where we stayed was sort of the farm state and then all you just saw was this beautiful rainforest something fog all around us and it was pretty nice yeah it was pretty good um so Finch hatton gorge we stayed at valley view hip camp it was 38 dollars per night unpowered yeah it wasn't wasn't far from finch hat and gorge just down the bottom of the hill really yeah well it wasn't that far because we thought we could ride the push bikes up there yeah we did ride for a bit of it <laughs> and then we pushed yeah, <laughs> it didn't look the last bit. it didn't look that bad uh you know we knew it was uphill but we didn't realize it was so bad but it was um very yeah, we rode the bikes up. It looked up and downhill, but it was uh, mostly uphill through the rainforest, which was really beautiful. Uh, Tom thinks we stopped somewhere before Finch Hatton Gorge. <laughs> well, maybe we didn't. Maybe I'm still <laughs> traumatised from that bike ride. But maybe. <laughs> uh, so at that point, I don't think I've actually been on my push bike since Finch Hatton Gorge. <laughs> yeah, you rode it the other day. Oh, for a little bit. Yeah, not and you went home before it took any further. I quit then too. Um, but the Finch Hatton Gorge was the, the breaker for the mountain bikes. I think we're really looking at e-bikes for the future now. It was a good ride home, but I don't think I tapped the pedals twice. Yeah, we didn't have to pedal all the way home, which was good because we went through sort of like creek crossings in the jungle. So you just left your feet off the pedals. and Up past like um, the camp. Platypus the... camp or something. Yeah, I think, it I think it was all, but it was no dogs there, so we couldn't stay. Yeah, Finch Hatton itself was very beautiful, um, very peaceful. Lots of big boulders and rainforest and little waterfalls and cascades. Yeah, well, we drove up later, didn't we, and then walked to the top. Yeah, well, I can't yeah. think of the name of the, the falls, the big falls. The sun wheel or something? Yeah, something like that. No, pinwheel. Pinwheel falls is the yeah. top of the falls there. Yeah, it's very hard to see when you get yeah. there. You can't yeah. actually see the falls, but it's a beautiful big. Would have been beautiful in summer. Yeah, great swimming hole. It was a little bit fresh because we were there in August, September, August, and it was a bit, um, a little water was a bit fresh, but it would have been a beautiful spot to swim in summer. Yeah, and there's a big creek crossing with the nice greasy rocks. Oh, yeah, I nearly fell in. Yeah, and you just, it's a beautiful view back over the mountains when you get up there. Yeah. It's about the only open spot you see the whole walk up. Yeah, so it's a lovely spot in the gorge there, and then, um, Valley View Hip Camp, it was just a set of amenities and some grassy slash paddocks, but it was in a beautiful yeah. location. Yeah. yeah, two leash free dogs, which drove ours bananas. Yeah, their owner's dogs just couldn't cruise around and welcomed everybody, and Mimi's not very social, so that was a little bit tense. But yeah. Dog will get over its dog fear one day, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. Um, so that was our first night, and there was next to no phone service. We didn't have Starlink yet. Um, so it was actually quite nice just to be off grid after working for four months and being sort of on all the time. So it was a little nice little detox there. Um, and then we just stayed there for the night and we moved on to Wranglewood, which uh, I found on Wikicamps. It's near Rockhampton on the coast side of Rockhampton. It's $5 per person per night unpowered and you must be fully self-contained. There's no facilities there. Uh, and the guys come and bring you free firewood every evening, which was nice. Yeah. This is driving there after I worked out, I left the handbrake on and I was wondering why the bus was running hot. Yeah, when we left Finch Hatton, we stopped at a little village, I can't remember its name, um, Ser no, I don't think it was Serena, um, to to get coffee and, and the bus was running hot on the way there and we were sort of struggling and uh, working hard and we couldn't figure out what we'd done, but we'd left the handbrake on in the ute. So um, 
thankfully, knock on wood, so far that is the one and only time we've done that <laughs> and that we realised what we'd done before we went too far and, and got some done some damage. Um, and then we stopped at Serena on the way as well and had coffee. I really liked the little village of Serena. Yeah, it was a nice spot. Little sugarcane town, little cafe we stopped at. Lots of parking, like big rig parking and stuff, so good for caravanners and things, but I liked it on the way through. Um, back to Wranglewood near Rockhampton. I think the river there is called the Keppel. I remember it was a big river when we walked down there. Big river. Um, it was. There's lots of midges there. That's probably the only downside, that, and it didn't have facilities, and Tom doesn't like the bus toilet. So um, lots of midges, but I'm one of those people that if there is a midge, it will bite me. They didn't bother Tom and Ali so much, but they gave me absolute curry. I just like coated myself in um, bug spray from head to foot the yeah. whole time I was there, pretty much. Free firewood. Free firewood was excellent. Yeah. The guys, the hosts come around and delivered free firewood in the evenings. And I went fishing. Now, it is a very croc infested river. So, and there's a croc farm just down from where we stayed. So, you do have to be very mindful of where you're standing in the dark while you're fishing. And I actually fished off a retaining wall um, near the boat ramp there. But I caught a couple of grunter, which was lovely. And um, But, yeah, it's a little bit eerie in the dark by yourself. You know there's crocs there. So trying to be croc smart in the dark, getting eaten by midges. I only caught a couple of fish and then called it quits for the day. Um, but after the one day there, we decided we'd head round to Keppel Sands Caravan Park. Yeah. Yeah. I went to Keppel Sands as a teenager, and as soon as Tom said Keppel Sands, I'm like, oh, that's midges. I was so traumatised by midges when I was there as a teenager. I just, I remember that whole Keppel Coast for nothing but midges, and they got me again. Yep, and it's written in the book here, there's two upside down, like two little dots and then the upside down <laughs> smile. The little sad frowny face, face. The frowny face. Because uh, the midges... Again, they just love me, and they pinged me as soon as we got out. Like, I don't think we'd even set up the bus before they'd started swarming me at Keppel Stands. Um, again, Tom and Ali didn't get bothered too bad, but, um, yeah, they absolutely pinged me at Keppel Stands as well. It was $45 per night on power then. I think we were, I thought we were off power. Were we? I'm pretty sure we were. Because it's $45 off power. I reckon we were off power because we are right out the back, remember? Yeah, but were we... Did we pay $45 off power? Off power. I'm sure we we're off power. Holy hell, well, that was dear then. That was probably one of the dearest off-powered sites we've paid for then. Yeah, I'm sure we we're off power. Because I had, I got out the twin solar panels. I remember getting them out. There you go. So it was $45 off power, which is, that would make it the most expensive unpowered site we've ever stayed in. Yeah. There you go. It's beautiful. You sort of, on the, more on the river side, weren't you? But it yeah. wasn't much of a walk up and over to the. To the beach and to the little rocky lookout headland thing. Yeah, a bit of a pub cafe there. Yeah, we went to the pub, didn't we? Yeah. And had coffee. And we caught up with my auntie, Daph, who lives in Rockhampton while we're there. So it was great. Grace Mere. Well, she lives in Grace Mere, close yeah. enough to Rockhampton. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's different <laughs> if you ask the people that live at Grace Mere. It probably is. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is. So uh, it was great to catch up with family. And that's something we've managed to do quite a bit while traveling around is catching up with. Um, catching up with our family as we travel around. I think a really good thing about the travel that we get to go to people that we wouldn't normally be able to go to. Yeah. Yeah. And while we were there in um Rocky we went into town and we got a dummy ute cut a uh, dummy key cut for the ute. So that means we've got a key now for when the vehicle's towing, it has to be on AC so we can put the dummy key in and turn it onto AC but someone can't jump in the ute and start it. With yeah. the dummy key, yeah, essentially. So they can try and start it. They can try and start it, but they can't start it. So it's just a little safety thing that we had done um, for towing. And we got a spare key cut. And we got a spare key cut as well, since it never come with one when we bought it. Um, we went out and we walked along Emu Park Beach in the morning, because we love to do a beach walk in the morning and have coffee. And we went on the Anzac Walk there, and that was spectacular the boardwalk and it had all the Anzac memorials. Ali didn't come. No, no, oh, no. I remember the one now. You remember the one now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a boardwalk and then you walk up and around onto a point. Yeah, and it has all the cutouts in the yeah. steel with all Beautiful the Anzac. Beaches. And the sun sort of comes through the back of the Anzac memorials. And, yeah. it's quite and they're beautiful. all way out swimming. Yeah. In like the river channel. Yep. Yeah. 
And we also walked on Kinker Beach the next morning, but Tom can't remember Kinker Beach either. I can't remember. I can remember the Anzac walk now, you said. I, um, I remember Kinker Beach because the little like river lake that you drive over there was all misty and foggy and cold. It was quite spectacular. And the tide was out, so it was just huge stretches of sand that the dog had a blast on. Tom can't remember. Ali didn't go. No. It's left to me to carry the weight again. Um, after another night at Keppel Sands, we headed for Bagara Beach. On the way, we went to, uh, we got fuel at Marmor was the town. That was the one just south of Rockhampton. Just right? south of Rockhampton, yeah. a big service centre. Yeah, $2.52. $2.52, there you go. The dearest fuel we've put in the bus to date. $2.52, and that was after my four cents a litre discount. <laughs> Which he argued with you about getting. She did, didn't she? Yeah. And so $412 to fill the bus on that occasion, just about make you cry. And that was our first fill up towing the ute, and we were getting 25 litres 100. And from memory, it's pretty flat through there. So we weren't doing a lot of hill work, and Tom must have been taking it fairly easy on yeah. the accelerator for a change. That's it. The handbrake must have affected it. No, not too bad anyway. Maybe we'll oh. put the handbrake on. It's got worse since then. <laughs> yeah, it has got worse since then. <laughs> I think you just drive it harder these days. Um, yeah, so then we went to Bagara Beach, and we actually wanted to stay out at Moore Park, but we couldn't get a big rig friendly site. So we went to the Big Four at Bagara. It was $57 on power, and we stayed for three nights, and yeah. we had some problems. Oh, yeah. yeah, I reckon there'd still be bird crap on the solar panel. We were parked in site 137. Now, if you ever stay at Bagara Big Four, request not site 137. Re don't request any site near 137. Do not go in that general yeah. area. The it, people next to us packed up and went in the middle of the night. The, people, the site was so bad that the people next to us paid for three nights and checked out in the middle of the night um, on their first night and just forfeited their money. Um, and the problem is it's a huge big tree that hangs over two sites, 137, I guess it's 136 on the other side. Oh, sure. um, and it was full of birds that chewed the little flower buds off and dropped them on your roof all night and through your roof hatches and through your windows. But the birds also shit on everything. And um, the amount of bird shit like on the top of the bus and our awnings and we couldn't open the roof hatches because the bird shit would come in onto the floor. <laughs> And the smell of all the bird shit was something. Yeah, but you'll see, you'll see it on Wikicamps. It's got a heap of reviews for Everyone that site. has pumped it on Wikicamps. Um, the don't, don't stay on that site. Apart from that, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. I'm not really into, I'm not a big four caravan park person. I don't want to pay extra money for splash pads and jumping pillows and people singing Elvis songs badly in a camp kitchen. Yeah. I don't want to pay for that. The wood fire pizzas were good. Yeah, yeah, I think that's one of the rare few good things that they actually did. And look, if you're into that sort of stuff, it's probably worth paying the extra money. Yeah. But for us, it's not worth paying the extra money. No. It's just not. There's not a lot of options out there, but. No, not at on the beach, really. Um, and like I said, our first choice was Moore Park because my auntie lives there and we were going out to see her. So we were going to stay at Moore Park Beach, which is on the north side of Bundaberg, um, but we couldn't get in. Um, and we we just drove out to see my auntie, and she was having an art show, which is coming up again soon, I believe. So um, go and support that if you're in the area. It was a good day. It was like a fair and a fete and an art show yeah, and food and trucks. And like young kids <coughs> starting their crafts, like the young dancers and the school artwork that they had in the show. So I think yeah, That's definitely good to support. And dancing and music and, yeah. yeah, it was like a cool little town fair thing going on. Um, while we were there, we hired some e-bikes and we drove around Bagara and out to Elliot Head. E-bikes. What were they? E-scooters. Oh, E-scooters, sorry. And Dad <laughs> Two-wheeled things with e-electric motors. <laughs> yeah. And Dad and I went on e-scooters out to, where did we go, out to Saddle Head? Well, you didn't get really far. No, I had an allergic reaction. To sunshine. To sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> and I just Fresh air. red rash all the way up my body. So uh, that was a wonderful experience. I was on antihistamines. Yeah. Passed out. <laughs> they had a, there was a cycle. I can't remember where it went to, but I got on the cycle path and just headed north. Yeah. Until I got to a river. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can't think. I could look on maps, but I can't think what it was. But it was a beautiful, like it was just a path the whole way along the beach. It's not really a beach, along the rock. <laughs> along along the beach, in inverted commas. Yeah, yeah uh, when you get slammed onto black rocks. Yes, yeah, and not really a swimming beach, a looking at beach. A look, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there's cleared spots where they've obviously got in and um, pushed the, the rocks, rocks out, out of the road. so you can get into yeah. the water. Yeah. Uh, and then I um, had a little whoops on my e-scooter while I was there and it ran over my ankle and my ankle was all black and cut up. I don't even know how I managed to do that. <laughs> it, uh, it bit me. Yeah. 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 Well, we rode a fair way down past the big dog park. and Yeah, all the way to Elliot Heads, I think. Yeah. 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 So you can go, like, get on the scooters, cost next to nothing, didn't it? Yeah, we yeah. did a day hire, I think. Yeah. Three-day hire and you can go. And I went all the way down. And then when I went the other way, I went all the way down. My e-scooter was flat, found a full one. Swapped it out. <laughs> Come back. Um, yeah, and then we uh, spent the next day in Bundaberg itself. So Bundaberg is off the beach a little bit and Tom's christened Bundaberg. Bundaberg, Dubbo by the beach. So, yeah, there was lots of um, camping. or Along the river. <laughs> like people just shacked up in tents and stuff along the river. Um, so Tom's blessed at Dubbo by the Sea. Kind of had the same smell to it as Dubbo yeah, does. didn't have much going for it. But actual Bundaberg doesn't have much going for it. Only Bundy brewed drinks, which we did the tour. Yeah. Bundy soft drinks, that was really cool. We went, it, and we also done the Bundy rum tour, and I actually liked the soft drink tour better than the rum tour. Yeah, it well, was, the soft drink, you just walked around. You didn't really go through the process. No, you just walked around and showed you how it all worked. Yeah. yeah, and then we got to buy some soft drinks. Yeah, we got to the party tour. Yeah, we got to taste all the different ones and then, um, yeah, buy some. And then we went and done the same with the Bundy rum thing. Yeah. I don't think we actually bought any rum because we're not really rum no, drinkers. No, you got two drinks with your yeah. ticket. Rightio. Um, so, yeah, Bundaberg didn't really love it. No. No real desire to go back. It wasn't awful. No. It's just... and that out there is nice. Anything nice out enough. by the sea is nice. Yeah. You yeah. probably won't find a prettier spot with the beaches with the rocks and the Yeah, it was fairly pretty. They've done it well. It's like it's pretty commercialised where we were, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, lots of little like resorty kind of restaurants and coffee shops and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's just a tick on my fancy. Hmm. I didn't mind. It was something <laughs> different driving through all the beautiful red soil to get out there. Yeah. From Bundaberg to... All the farming country and the yeah. strawberries and lavenders and stuff they grow out that yeah. way and sugar cane. That was something. They're good kind of... people watching Spot Bundaberg. Yeah. A bit like Kempsey. Yeah. <laughs> or Raymond Terrace. <laughs> or Neck Knock. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think just to finish off this episode, we uh, we went from Bagara to Rainbow Beach. Yeah. And we stayed at Rainbow Beach Holiday Village, which is the G'day Park. And it was $42 per night on power for two nights. Yeah. Snug. Yeah. No, it's not in easy enough. Yeah. I wasn't back and forth to get in. I went straight in. No, but a lot of people were. Yeah. We, we got in. Like, you, you can get a big rig in there. You want to know how to drive it. No, it's not that bad. You took out a palm tree on the way out. No, I don't remember that. <laughs> Of course, he I'm doesn't. Sure he also clipped the sign coming out pretty badly. I think there's a little scratch on the back of the bar. No, no definitely so. a palm tree. Definitely got a palm tree on the way out. You're both more than welcome to drive. <laughs> I drive occasionally. It terrifies me. So no, thank you. You can you just keep going, and we'll we'll just help you from the passenger seat. Yeah. Um, you might be getting duct tape. <laughs> um, I think the worst part about the holiday village is that I remember. That the toilets were, it was like an eight digit code to get in, and then they were filthy. <laughs> you can remember the toilet. Shut up! <laughs> of course, Ali remembers the toilet. She, she only leaves the bus to, to go to the toilet, pretty much. <laughs> I do remember it being a long code. I and do, filthy. I do remember that. Or maybe it's just because I'm tall and you couldn't see all well, the like dirt at the top and everything. Ig you know, ignorance is bliss. Dad has that problem. If you ever want someone to inspect your amenities and see how good of a job your cleaners are doing, get Tom because he can see all the places that most people can't and um, he finds all the gross things on top of the shower cubicle dividing walls. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, there's toilet paper in the one today. Was there? Yeah. On the top? 
on the floor. On the floor. Very good. Um, so once we got to Rainbow Beach, we set up and we went to the deck for lunch, yeah. which is a fabulous spot looking over the beach there. Yeah, it was a nice spot. A bit pricey. Very pricey. <laughs> I think we were $12 schooners. Yeah. Um, but it was in a gorgeous spot, and I guess they got to capitalise on yeah. what they got there. That's it. Um, no one has to go and have $12 schooners. We chose the $12 schooners, so that's the price you choose to pay. Uh, and then in the evening, we went up to Carlo Sandblow and had a little picnic, watched the sunset over Rainbow Beach, which was lovely. Yeah. Very nice spot up there. It's, it's very popular. It there. is a steep climb. You want some level of fitness to get yeah. up there. If you come from the bottom. Yeah. Or even from the top, I suppose. Even through the car off, park yeah. was straight up. Um, but, yeah, we sat up there. It was quite popular. There was quite a few people up there just sitting on the top watching the sunset over Rainbow Beach, which was really nice. Really nice way to end the day. Sat up there with a bottle of champagne and some cheese and bickies. Yeah, we weren't the only ones feeling it. No, lots. Uh, on the second day, my mum and dad come over with their boat and we went fishing from Inskip Point over to Fraser <laughs> Island. We did only caught a couple of little things, but it was really nice to be out on the water um, with my parents and do some fishing. What did you pair do? I went uh, walking I... around the point there. Stayed in the door, Ali stayed in the bus. Tom walked. That sounds about normal. Yeah, walked around the point there where the ferry comes in. Tom and Ali are not fisher people. No. Ali no. will not fish full stop. This one only fishes as long as he catches something. And if I bait his hook. Yeah. That's pretty much He's it. He's pedantic. Yeah. yeah. yeah um, that's a vein of my existence. You and your bait. In my bait. He gets so cranky when the bait smell gets through the fridge and stuff. And it offends him. It does offend me. <laughs> Um, it only offends him because he's not a fisherman. I'm sure if he was a fisherman, he wouldn't care. Um, and then we finished off our second night there with a lovely walk along the beach. Yeah, and we did a few walks along the beach. Beautiful. Beautiful spot at sunset. Like, And it's dog friendly and people are four-wheel driving and just sitting on the sand watching the sun. It, it's a gorgeous spot. Yeah, I went for a couple of walks south. Yeah, you went yeah. walk around to the south there. Too. Right, well. I think that's all for episode two and tune in again next week and we will be doing episode three and we'll continue on our southward run from Rainbow Beach um, back south and see you all next week.